Hey, we're looking at chapter 8 now, Matrices and Determinants, starting in section 1, Matrices and Systems of Equations. So, with the rise of computing software and hardware and systems and all of that stuff, it makes sense to take systems of equations, systems which can represent real life situations where there are multiple variables all coexisting at the same time and to make those systems more palatable to be input into a computer to get specific results. So now in this section we're going to talk about kind of what that looks like. How you take a system of equations and boil it down to only what you need and then you can input that data into a computing system. So in systems of equations, you have multiple variables, and then they all equal usually a constant, okay, some number. Each system, each, sorry, each equation in this system becomes a row. So it's here, we have row 1, that's an equation. Row 2, that's an equation. All the way down to row m. Now the, the mth equation, how many equations you have. For variables, you have columns straight up and down. So your first variable, usually you saw it as the x variable. The second is the y variable and all the way across until you get to the usually the constants the number it all equals we get to the nth column however many columns there are in the matrix so rows are horizontal columns are vertical so when they ask you before a quiz or a test to get the desk into five rows, now you can think, well, is it really rows or columns? So there you go, food of thought. Each entry in the matrix is A sub I, J. I is the row, J is the column. Then there are M by N, M rows and columns. And a matrix is said to be of order M by N. So we say number of rows by the number of columns. Now usually to do that quickly, it's how many down, how many across. So example A, just one data point, just the number two. So that is a one by one. Example B, going down one, there's four across. So one by four. Example C, down 2, over 2, that is what we call a square matrix, 2 by 2, kind of like example A, 1 by 1. And D, down 3, 2 over the 3 by 2 matrix. Now, to convert a system of equations to an augmented matrix. So we have the first column is the x's. The second column, the y's. Third column, z's. The fourth column is the constants, okay? So to make a matrix for this system, going to do a set of brackets and this matrix will be a three by four there's three equations there's four columns three 
variables one constant and you only take the numbers so any letters are kind of signified by the column that you're in so you don't need the letters you just need the numerical value so in the first equation there's one x there's negative four y's three z's and the five constant so kind of reminiscent of synthetic division just taking the numerical data the third equation doesn't have any y's so there's zero y values. You use a zero placeholder. Negative four is these, six. So we see that they kind of line up with each other. The x's, the y's, the z's, and the constants. And for an augmented matrix, where the equals are in the stem equations, You pull the, the dots all the way down, okay? So that's an augmented matrix. A coefficient matrix is, yeah, you guessed it, just the coefficients on the variables. So you no longer have the constant column. You're just working with the coefficients of the variables. Now, kind of like operations with systems of equations, there are three elementary row operations with matrices. And you'll see they're pretty similar to what we saw in chapter 7 with systems of equations. You can interchange two rows, you can swap any two rows. Number two, you can multiply a row by a non-zero constant because, of course, you don't want to multiply by zero. You'll cancel that all out, and it, it's, a, it's a bad story for the bad ending. Don't do that. Then three, you can add a multiple of a row to another column. That's the one we're going to see the most in this chapter is you do number two, you multiply a row by a non-zero constant, and then you add that result to another row. So example A, interchanging the first and second rows. So we're just switching those. Oh no, where'd it go? Okay, here we are. So the first and second rows are being switched. It means the third row is unaffected. Just when I copy that one over. So the first row moved down to the second row's position. So one, sorry, zero, one, three, four, negative one, two, zero, three, and move the second row up to the first row's position. And we're done. We did that move. Examples B and C, try those, check your results. Kind of pause the video, look at those, check your results with my complete notes online. Now, this is the big part of this section, so buckle up, okay? Row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. So the whole object of these is to get what's called an identity matrix. You know like the additive identity is zero, anything plus zero is itself. The multiplicative identity is one, anything times one is itself. Matrices have an identity also. And the identity is always a square matrix, so 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, what have you. All along the diagonal are ones. Every other position. 
is a zero. Now you may be thinking what's so special about this, but let me tell you, okay? Going back a few pages to this coefficient matrix, okay? You have the x column, the y column, and the z column. Now here, you can think of the first column as an x column. The second is y's, third as z's. We're missing a constant column. But what if we had a constant column? So let's say like 4, negative 3, and 7. Well, look here, look horizontally, okay? 1x is 4. 1y is negative 3. 1z is 7. So that's what we're going for with that identity matrix. Identifying each variable and what its value is. Now we have rho echelon form, we have reduced rho echelon form. Rho echelon form is not unique. There are multiple correct rho echelon forms. Rho echelon is we have the ones diagonally down to the left of those you have zeros, okay? But in the upper right corner there are still numbers. So half the matrix is zeros. In reduced rho echelon form that is unique you have that identity matrix up there with the ones diagonally and the zeros everywhere else. Now this is called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So Gauss-Jordan elimination. Because the guy who invented it or kind of coined it was two guys, Gauss and Jordan, two mathematicians. So to do this, we first want to take our matrix, or sorry, system, and write it as the matrix. And the best thing you can do on this part of the chapter is to be very specific in what you're doing in every step. So really do what I do, okay? Write down everything you're doing because if you get something wrong, it's a lot easier for me to identify what you did wrong if you have a good trail of breadcrumbs for me to follow through all your work. If we have some work here, some work there, you don't have to identify what you're doing from step to step, how am I supposed to know, okay? So Gauss-Jordan elimination, what you want to do is you want to work down and then to the right. Well, in the video, is it right or this right? Maybe this right, maybe in my way, this is right, okay? So down to the right. Okay, you know what I mean. So, we want to zero out all of these values first, and then work our way right to zero out these values. So work down, then to the right. And we're gonna use a whole lot of that third step add a multiple of a row to another row. So I'm going to use this one to cancel out the two and the one in row three and row four. Very, very similar to what we did with systems of equations. 
So I'm going to write down what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from row one to row three. I'm going to add negative two of row one. In the same step, because I'm going to do two steps in one. From the first row to the fourth row, I'm going to add a negative row one. All right. Now row one and row two are not changing. So we're going to cup those over. Nothing changes, so just cap them over. Negative two, negative three. And then, can they do some mental math here? Every single number in row one, make a copy. Multiply that copy by negative two, then paste that copy into row three. So, 1 times negative 2 plus 2, that's 0, that's what you wanted. Uh, 2 and negative 2 and negative 4 and 4, well that's nice, that's 0 also. Okay. 2 and 1, that's 3. 0, that's negative 3 still, okay. And negative 4 and negative 2. Negative six. All right. So now the first row into the third row. One negative plus one zero cancels out. That's what they wanted. Ah, two negative two and negative four negative six. And negative that two that's negative five. Wait a minute. Nope, not. I'm adding the wrong thing. So this negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 with negative 7, negative 6. Okay. There's a lot of mental math going on. So if you need to write things down, write things down. 0 doesn't change it. Negative 2, negative 19, negative 21. Okay. Negative 21. I can't see, but you will. Kinda. Got to found. There you go. Move that. There. Negative 21. You saw it. You heard it. Now you saw it. Good deal. Kinda leave you up here. Okay. So. I cancels all of those. Those are all zeros. Now I want to work to the right. So this one in the second row, second column, this one here, use it to cancel this negative six. So let's do that. So it's row two to row four. I'll add six of row two. And because I'm running into room, come down. Okay. I'm gonna try to work smarter, not harder. Gonna have to copy a lot of this over. The first and second rows aren't changing. Or the first, second, and third rows aren't changing. The only one that's changing is the fourth. Going to be adding six of row two to the fourth row. So the zero in the first column times six. Add it to the zero in the fourth column. That's still zero. The one in the second column, second row, added to times six, added to the negative six in the fourth row, second column. 
that's zero. And hey, the one times six, six, and negative six, zero. All right, can start, that's good. And negative two times six, negative 12, negative 13. Ooh, kind of an odd number. <laughs> odd number, get it? Right. And negative three times six, negative 18, plus negative 21, do I have that right? Oh, I'd love to skip anything, okay. Just want to make sure for a posterity to have this right. Then then, okay. So now, kind of look at my complete deal to make sure I have it correct. So the identity matrix, I want all of these diagonals. I want those to all be ones. So, the first and second column, I have, sorry, first and second row, I have those, that's great. But the third and fourth rows, I don't quite have those yet, I want ones. So in the third row, multiply the third row by negative one third. In the fourth row, I'm sorry, not by negative one third, but positive one third. I'm looking at the fourth column, not the third column. The fourth row multiplied by negative one thirteenth. That will take care of those numbers for me. That will scale them down. So, 3 times 1 third is 1. Negative 3 times 1 third, negative 1. Negative 6 times 1 third, negative 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Fourth row, negative 13 times negative 1 thirteenth is 1. Negative 39 times negative 1 thirtieth is 3. And they almost have row echelon form. From the fourth row to the third row, I'm going to add just one row four. That will get me into row echelon form. Well, I wish the whiteboard had this copy and paste. That'd be nice. That would also be pretty sci-fi, so. So the first row, second row, fourth row, all copy over. The third row is changing because the copy of the fourth row is adding to the third row. So one plus negative one, zero. Three plus negative two is one. All right, so I have row echelon form. I have the ones diagonally all the way down. I have zeros in the bottom left corner. Now I need to get zeros in the top right. I already have some of them. I have to get the rest. So I'm going to kind of work my way up. Now I'm going to go up to the left. So I'll take care of this column, and then this one, and then this one. So work up to the left. So from the fourth row to the second, to cancel out the negative two in the fourth column, going to add two row fours. 
from the fourth row to the first. Oh, there's already zero there. Good deal. Alright, that's all I really need to do. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a little mistake. We had row echelon form back here. Had the one diagonally. Had the zeros down here. My mistake. That's row echelon form already. I'm in my head, I'm thinking this is kind of weird. Already had it. And when I cancelled out the negative one, boy, I gotta go back and fix a little mistake. Sorry about that. When I cancelled out the negative one in the third row, fourth column, I also want to cancel out the negative two. Add two, row four. And I'm so sorry I messed that up. But that's why I've penciled heavy erasers. Hopefully you're not using a pen. Or you have an erasable one, that'd be good. So the uh, fourth row and the second row, or sorry, fourth row and first row are not changing. The second and third are. So let's deal with the third row first. We have uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 and negative 1, it cancel out. 3 and negative 2 is 1. Now from the fourth row to the second row. 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 1 and 2. So negative two and two gets allowed. Six and negative three is three. All right. So now I have zeros in the fourth column. I worked up. Now I want to work left. Okay. So now from the third row into the second row. Add one row three and for the third row into the first to cancel out the negative one. Add one row three. I'm sorry I misspoke again. Pia negative row three into row two. My mistake. Again. <laughs> That's why it's important to leave the trail of breadcrumbs, okay? So let's see, their fourth row stays the same, zero, 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 one, three. Third row stays the same, zero, zero, one, zero, one. The second row, adding a negative row three, so zero, 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 and one, one. Negative 1 and 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1 and 3 is 2. And the third row into the first column, 0 and 1 is 1, 0 and 2 is 2. 1 and negative 1 cancel out, 0, 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 2 is 3. All right, getting close to it. So all I have to get rid of now is this two right here. So I'll do a row two to a row one. I'll add negative two row two. And that will cancel out the two in the first row, second column. So I'll do a little copy paste magic 
here. That was not great. Try it again. Okay. And zero and kind of do this. Okay. Bring it down, but I want to see you. So zero and one is one. Naked two and two cancels out zero. Zero is zero is zero. Zero is zero is zero. Negative four and three. Negative one. All right. So I have what I wanted. I have reduced for a cell form. Can zoom in with the ones diagonally and zeros everywhere else for the variables and then have the constant column over to the right. So what this tells me is that my one x value is negative one. My one y value is two. My one z value is one. Y1 W value is 3. So my ordered quadruple, right there, negative 1, comma 2, comma 1, comma 3. I told you, buckle up, it's a pretty big problem. <laughs> so that's a 4 equation, 4 variable system, put to new matrices, solved with Gauss Jordan elimination. Take a look at that last example. Check your work with my complete note online.